I still remember it, though. The long days in that cold prison cell. The months looking for someone fearless enough to give me a job and a place to live. It was like a nightmare that didn't seem like a nightmare until I woke up. Screaming in an asylum. I will tell you this, if a nightmare like that should ever happen again, if for some evil reason I'm ever accused by anyone of killing, the next time, I will not be the one who wakes up screaming. everyone, I'm Sam Pancake, and welcome to Sam Pancake Presents the Monday Afternoon Movie. This is our holiday special, yes! La 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 Spooky. Our guest today is, introduce yourself, guest. Hi, I'm Sam. <laughs> this is Sam Greisman, and Sam is a filmmaker and a, a writer. Yeah, and a, a, a writer-director. A writer-director type. And, um, One of those. All of those things. And he has graciously uh, agreed to join me today for our holiday special. His relationship to this movie will be revealed later. Sam, thank you for coming. And the movie we're doing today is called Home for the Holidays. And I was hard pressed to find a a holiday movie in this genre, which is 1970s horror supernatural movie that usually feature a female lead. What did so, you find one? Uh huh. Oh, where did you find one? Oh, did I ever? Thank you, Aaron Spelling, Leonard Goldberg Productions. Wow. <laughs> when I saw Aaron Spelling's name, I let out a shriek. Right away. Yeah. Right away. So, Home for the Holidays, not to be confused with the Holly Hunter Claire Danes, Jodie Foster directed movie of 1995. Which I also love because Robert Downey Jr. is the gay son, and that very much reminded me of myself. But that's for another podcast. So we Home for the Holiday starts, and I just want to give the credits first of who created this. It's produced by Paul y- Younger or Younger Wit of Golden, Golden Girls fame. Gold, exactly. I saw that name and thought, I know that name. <laughs> yes. And then IMDb did it, and we're like, oh, of course I know that. Of course, yes. You've seen it so many times yes, it's popped in your up. life. As I've been falling asleep thousands of times. <laughs> and it was written by Joseph Stefano, who also wrote Psycho, and a lot of other like TV horror movie type things. When I checked his credits, I mean, Psycho is really his biggest movie. Yeah, I didn't even know that he did Psycho, yeah. and I looked him up, and I must have looked up the wrong guy, because, <laughs> because I was like, well, it was this guy that wrote this. <laughs> because, well, not to be confused with the, the 90s uh, porn star Joey Stefano. Yes. Oh, that's who I That's what you're thinking of. Yeah. yeah. And his the biography of him, Wonder Bread and Ecstasy, which is another, another podcast. Joseph Stefano wrote Psycho, and a lot of like his other credits are like Psycho 2, 3, 4, and 5. Oh, I guess he made a career of that. And it was directed by John Llewellyn Moxie, which who who directed a lot, a lot, a lot of TV. If you look at his thing, he also directed the movie The House That Would Not Die, which we featured in SPPTMA. I just should say the whole thing. It's as yeah. long as it's as much as saying the um, abbreviation. We did it in this podcast in season one starring Barbara Stanwyck. It was basically just a Barbara Stanwyck wardrobe ensemble vehicle for her Nolan Miller clothing. John Llewellyn Moxie has the greatest name. <laughs> I've ever seen. That name came up and I was, that can't be. I just imagine him like in a cavernous mansion, such as the film <laughs> depicts. Exactly. Yes. So then the 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 the, mu- the, the movie starts and there's sprightly holiday music. In fact, a, a, one of the things of this movie is like, even though people get horribly murdered and it's a rainy, yes. like old dark house, like uh, not haunted, but like tragedy does happen. There's lots of sprightly music. There is. It's which is weird because the house is. I can smell the house through the screen. It is thick. <laughs> yeah. Everything is thick in that house. Thick. Also, the exterior is. It's a few other movies we did on the first season, including uh, Something Evil with Sandy Dennis, and there's another movie called Crowhaven Farm we haven't done yet with Hope Lang, and it's. If it's not the exact same house on the Disney Ranch, it looks like they built the same house on the Fox Ranch, the Disney Ranch, 
and uh, whoever the Warner Brothers Ranch. Those things way out in the valley, which maybe you've been to before maybe. in your life. It definitely doesn't look like wherever it's supposed to be because they keep like coming in shivering from <laughs> yes. the cold, and then they show the outside, and it's just a dirt lot in Burbank. Yes, <laughs> completely. But also a dirt lot with green trees and green grass. So wherever they are in America, and it's never never specified where they are. No. Though it rains a lot at Christmas, but everything's really green. Right. But it's a small town that is very gossipy. It's very gossipy. There's not much to talk about. So we, because we open up and then like Eleanor Parker, who, Dame Eleanor Parker, who was one of the grandest holdouts of the Hollywood golden age studio era, who still worked a lot uh, through the 70s and maybe into the 80s. And I looked her up and she only died a few years ago and she got real old. Um, I mean, g- good for her. She like looks like she retired to Palm Springs. And I've always been fascinated by her because she was always so grand. And we mostly know her. A lot of people just know her in many generations as the Baroness in yeah. The Sound of Music. Yeah. So, but she was in lots of stuff. I think she was nominated for many Oscars. She was number one. Three. Oh, wow. I looked up. I looked up. There are 11 Oscar nominations among the cast of this movie. Well, let's get into that cast. So, well, first of all, we just, they, they hit us before the cast even comes up. They hit us with a nice big chunk of like, uh, it's exposition party of two. Eleanor's decorating a tree, leaves the house, runs into this guy on the road, which, why is he just on the road I like don't know. that? It was very weird. <laughs> it was weird. And he's like, he, and she's like, hello. The actor's name is John Fink. Bless his heart. Yeah. The character's name is Ted, I think. Ted is the worst. <laughs> And so the fact you come back at all after what happened means this old town can breathe a little easier. Your uh, sisters are coming too, or so they say. Who are they, Doctor? The town. Just town talk, Alex. And if there's one thing the good people of Kenya like to talk about, it was the Morgan family. Your sisters are coming, aren't they? I'm on my way to the airport to pick them up now. They should be arriving at 6.15, unless the plane's held up by this weather. That's why I'm hurrying. It'll be a race back to father's before the road washes out. Still mothering him to death, huh? I'll tell them you said hello. So then she, as she drives off, we see the credits. And I love these old school TV credits. Even though it's a movie, the credits run like this. Starring Sally Field and Joel Hayworth. Guest star, Julie Harris. Special guest star, Eleanor Parker. Special appearance by Jessica Walter. And Walter Brennan as Benjamin Morgan, and then the the other two men who were in it, because there aren't that many people in no, it. No. The special appearance element was shocking. <laughs> yes. It is quite, okay. it is indeed a special appearance. Yeah, it's just, whoa, is it a special appearance? So, as we all know, uh, Sally Field, we all know Sally Field, and some people in this room know Sally Field better than others, because, Sam, reveal your secret relationship. My secret, long-held <laughs> secret relationship is that she is indeed my mother. Yay! <laughs> Which, and thank you so much for doing this. Of course. Because now I'll backtrack a little bit and say, when I did find this movie, and as, I, as I've told you, Sam, when I asked you to do it, and, and thank you again, graciously, for doing it, I try to find some little bit of connection even it's just a funny like coincidence or someone likes the movie but when i found that this was the only movie appropriate for this podcast in this genre i was like i know someone's son who's in this movie so thank you it gave me a chance to see a true classic piece of work (laughs) you're welcome and then so sally's in it she plays the youngest daughter christine and then jill i don't know if it's haworth or hayworth it's like hayworth they drop the y yeah she was the original Sally Bowles on Broadway. She was, and immediately took a liking to her and then looked that up and was like, oh, that's why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you yeah. go. And then she didn't get to be in the movie because I read all that too about yeah. her. And she kind of didn't quite make the leap to stardom somehow. No, it never really seemed to work out for her. Which, no. having watched the movie, maybe I know why. I, I, it, it, she does, she's English. She does a, a fairly good... American Trans- Mid-Atlantic. Atlantic. Trans- yeah. yeah, let's it's say. A, it's a transatlantic. Not just Mid-Atlantic, <laughs> but transatlantic action. She's got an eyebrow situation which does not quit. No. There's a, a lot of real sculpted eyebrows in this. Eleanor Parker, like I said, is a grand dame Hollywood legend, red hair. She's got the very, her voice is just so, and this every syllable has a story to tell. Please, Joe. What's wrong, Alex? Is father ill? He's dying. Is that the only reason you made us come back? He is our father. I swore I would never set foot in that house again, not even to have the pleasure of seeing his coffin closed. 
If he were just dying, I'd say let his new wife bury him. But I... I couldn't ignore this. And then there's Jessica Walter, who still, like your mother, working today. Yes. Widely loved and celebrated Jessica Walter, who I did Arrested Development with and never got to cross paths with, which broke oh, my that's heart. that's a huge shame. The one time I saw her at that Ralph's in Sherman Oaks on Ventura and like Beverly Glenish. Oh. And I was going to go up to her and I, and I was too afraid. She was just in the produce, just bagging some lemons. Oh, I feel I feel like seeing her there, I would want her to be Lucille and not like <laughs> like yelling at someone. To exactly, like, <laughs> like punishing the produce yes. manager somehow. But she wasn't. Okay. So Helener, Jessica, uh, Walter Brennan, who's always one of the most annoying old character actors of the Golden Age, too. Yeah. I grew up watching him in reruns of the show called The Real McCoys, which... We only watched because it was on, and where where I lived out in the country in West Virginia, we only got one channel. Yeah. So we, I was stuck watching one channel, and Walter Brennan played Grandpa McCoy. Was he also stuck only in the bed in that show? Because that's what his character that was the main. He, crux he had of his this, character this one book. of his distinct character features through or actor like. I don't know what, it, not a mannerism, but just like a, a problem was that he limped a lot. And I don't know if it was an affectation, yeah. but he had this like hobbly and hobbly bobble. So maybe that's why he's in the bed yeah, the whole time in this movie. Sense. And he peeks. Through, there's a, in general, there's a lot of peeking through there doorways. There is a lot of really great peeking through doorways, peeking through rain covered windows, push ins on people peeking through rain covered windows as giant flashes of lightning. <laughs> strike in the background <laughs> there's a, a lot, lot of that. that and like i said the house looks like a lot of the other houses in these movies and here i'm gonna do i'm gonna before we get into the juicy delicious christmas ham meat of the plot and the what goes down between the characters is it, it riveted me because there's a movie that came out the year before this with your mom and eleanor parker called maybe i'll come home in the spring which was even though it doesn't fit this genre for this podcast i still as a kid was fascinated with it because not only does Eleanor Parker a year earlier play Sally's mother, in this she plays her sister. I looked him up. There's a 24 year age difference. And you can tell in this <laughs> movie. Tell. It's very confusing how, how they could possibly. And there's no explanation like it's a different mother. No, no, no. It's the same mother. That's very much a part of the plot. Yeah. It's absolutely the same mother. It's totally. It, it makes no sense. Yeah. I, they I don't... look 24 years apart at least. At least. And I, they have your mom, I think, kind of dressed. She's kind of playing more. I think she was in her early 20s, but she's almost playing like a teenager. She seems like a teenager. And Eleanor Parker seems like a woman in her mid to late 40s. 50. 50. Early yeah, 50s. Early. I, I think was being she generous, was, but 50. You were. Yeah. But I think she like, I mean, let's, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a beautiful woman of near 50. Yeah. So they, they exist. <laughs> they do exist. But like she, yeah, it's, it's, it's pushing it. Now, just a sidebar, like I said, again, on maybe I'll come home in the spring. For some reason, I got that thing stuck in my head as a little kid. I saw the first of it. Have you ever seen it, Sam? I haven't. I know of its existence just by name. And your mom writes about it, goes into it a bit in her in her memoir, which I not sidebar on top of a sidebar. I knew you through Twitter and Instagram and thought you were cute and funny and everything. And which kept, I am, guys. You are indeed. <laughs> and Ira and I knew Ira yeah. Madison, your friend. Yeah. And I started following you and stuff. And then I started reading, like maybe a month or two later, your mother's. <laughs> Uh, autobiography, which is amazing, which is I very good. highly recommend. Jesus. Good, good holiday shopping. Yeah. Get in there. In pieces, Sally Field, <laughs> bookstore near you or Amazon. And I was like, oh, I've slowly put it all together that you were her son. Yep. But then I, uh, back to, maybe I'll come in the spring. As a kid, I was so obsessed with, kind of a spoiler alert, but it, the movie's like 50 years old, so get over it, everyone. She, your mom has this big, long, obviously a wig, giant hair. She runs away from home and maybe I'll come home for the spring. All right. Eleanor Parker and Jackie Cooper, who was a child star also, mm-hmm. plays her father. Um, and she has, at the beginning of the movie, she sneaks back into the lovely suburban home she was raised in. And you find out throughout the movie and lots of flashbacks that David Carradine, who I also was in a movie with, which is a whole other story, oh boy. plays her boyfriend, her hippie boyfriend. She ran off with her hippie boyfriend. Oh, it was like a dropout kind of yes. vibe. It was counterculture yeah. hippie. She was like 16 or 17. He sweeps her away from the house. She, in, in pieces, her book talks about how 
He never wore underwear and he never would button the front of his pants. Oh. So there are shots as, as a I gay I guy. I blocked that out from my memory when I read it. <laughs> sure. Well, she was like, ooh, that's gross. And like, I like uh, completely it r- pricked up my gay ears, if you will. And she was like, yeah, just barely out of frame with David Carradine. It's just like basically his pubic hair in the top of his penis. Well, it was the 70s. It was the 70s. <laughs> but she like also... She has this, she, when she goes back home and they, they're still fighting, they're so happy she's home. Eleanor Parker is the mother. And you just can't even buy Eleanor Parker in that movie is because she's supposed to be this like harried suburban housewife who's just barely holding it together. But she looks super glam. Her hair is that red, perfect, like the same hair she had throughout her entire career. You know, find a signature style and stick with it. Thank you, Eleanor did. And you don't kind of buy her as someone like scrambling the eggs and burning the bacon in the morning and stressed out. And so Sally, like when she comes home, she gives herself this perfect shag haircut by herself in the bathroom. She removes her wig, basically. And I was riveted. As a kid, I didn't realize it was a wig. And I was like, oh, my God, how you can give yourself that kind of professional haircut? She's given haircut. it to me many times. <laughs> You have it now. You have, I have a perfect it now, guys. Carol Brady shag. It's it's great. It gets the attention of all the boys. They love it. So in that movie, and this like, and there's this really kind of grating, but also kind of amazing Linda Ronstadt title song called "Maybe I'll Come Home in the Spring," oh and that would stick in my head as a kid. And I, this just shows you that I'm a crazy person. I would say that line so many times throughout my life to my mother. Because I always like to project myself into every single movie starring a woman and project well, those relations. I mean, like, you're gay. So, I, I'm yeah. gay, so yeah. obviously. And I remember being in college and my mother was like, when are you coming home? And I'm like, maybe I'll come home in the spring. And she was like, what? You're not coming home for Christmas? I'm like, no, no. mama. I'm jo- <laughs> it's just this line from a movie. God, mama. Um, <laughs> so check out Maybe I'll Come Home in the Spring and Sally's magical haircut. So back to Home for the Holidays. We don't find anything out about these sisters, about their lives. No, never. (laughs) Not their jobs? No. We find out at one point that Christine, who is my mom's character, is in grad school. Oh, I missed that. Okay. There's like one very brief mention of, from the father, being very derogatory towards grad school. As if like, whoa, you're in grad school. Like, what up? (laughs) Yeah, how dare yeah, what are you, you doing with your life? Oh, which God. fair? What a failure! Yeah, so they they all come back. Eleanor's picked them up. They for some reason it's the house where the barn garage is a real distance from the house, and for some reason they have to park Eleanor's big black uh, Mercedes in the barn garage and then walk to the yeah. house. There's a lot the of rain. walking through rainy mud. A lot of it. Yeah, a lot of it. And so they she tells them that's when Eleanor reveals to them as the older sister. She thinks that the mother, the the father thinks that Julie Harris, who's his second yes. wife. Who's already gotten a great intro in which she's just peering down the staircase yes. for silently for, for a long no time. reason. Eleanor, and it doesn't, and for some reason, Eleanor was already there decorating a tree. Right. And Julie didn't know. Yeah, that's weird. Right? Yeah, I Also, didn't that. the interior of this house in no way matches the exterior. No. There's this grand two-story giant like 12 oaks from Gone with the Wind staircase. Yeah. That it's does like not... Titanic level <laughs> staircase. It's <laughs> just Lately. golden. You can see Francis Fisher glowering you at the can. top of it. In by a the pic- clock. In a picture hat. Well, the minute they get out of the car, we know who Jessica's character is. Let's go get a drink before we catch pneumonia. Freddy, you drank enough on the plane to last you through New Year's Eve. She's the alcoholic. She is, as Jessica Walter has done her whole career... <laughs> Plays a brilliant <laughs> drunk, brilliant drunk, just yeah. like Lucille Blue, just like and a, a drunk that you just love. You love you, can, and she's even so though she's fall down drunk all the time. Gorgeous. She also yeah. her hairstyle is she's ahead of the cur- curve there because in seventy two she has the perfect like seventy seven seventy eight Jacqueline Smith not quite fair at like feather cut by level. It's gorgeous. Yeah, she looks great. She looks fantastic. She's at the top of her yeah, looks game. Top of and every she's the only one that gets styling that. Doesn't make her look insane. Yeah, that, that's flattering. Yeah, there's a lot of as we talked also you and I like your mother. There's a lot of ringlets, there's a lot a of ring ton curls, of ringlets. Somewhere in that house, there is a full time hairdresser. Yeah, to put everyone's hair up in very slick chignon buns and yeah. ringlets, ringlets around the face. Seventy two. I remember as a child was a ringlet around the face year. A ton of them, but then their hairstyles switch i mean they do a lot of work on their hair <laughs> a lot of work because it'll be one day it'll be ringlets and the next day it'll be just long wavy well, blown your, out your mom has at one point a real uh, not great sit, barrette situation yeah barrettes two by the useless temples. barrettes by the temples 
doing nothing. Oh, and also I wanted to mention like when they first get out of the Mercedes in the garage barn before they run the 18 miles over to the house in the rain, they're all wearing hats, hats, hats. There's, everyone has yeah. their hats. And I can barely read my scrawl here or what happens. Yeah, Julie's staring through the window. Immediately, Eleanor hustles them into the house. They have to make an appearance to Walter Brennan. He's in the study on the first floor in bed. They go in, they line up. There's lots of like line up and stare downs. Yeah. There's a lot of tableaus of the beautiful. I took a lot of pictures on my phone from the TV because they're all gorgeous. Yeah, there's a lot of beautiful shots of people oddly standing silent for what seems like an eternity. <laughs> eternity. That's the thing about a lot of these movies. It's only an hour and 16. And even though a lot happens, it feels like three hours. Yeah, so like Why three is hours. that? I don't know. They don't know what, there's just like, in this movie in particular, there just, there's a lot of like people walk, people can see each other and they're in the same room, but they just like silently walk towards each other for like a good four or five seconds. <laughs> Yes. So this is when this movie became a little bit like my life because Walter Brennan, he's old and he's dying and he thinks he reveals that Julie Harris is poisoning him. Yes. But not before he goes around the room and insults every single one of his four daughters. Yep. He lets them have it, which is exactly what my father used to do as he lay on his deathbed for five long years um, as, he sat, as he sunk in, away from dementia. But he was not demented enough not to let us all have it. Like my nephew would say, we went in the room and he roasted all of us one by one within 15 minutes. Love and a that's a bed roast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Rest in peace, my father. So you came. You all came. Christine, you were so young when you left. Is it graduate school that you're in now or haven't you started yet? No, I'm in my first year. Joe, I stopped counting the husbands after the third. So did I. After I found out you didn't have to marry them to sleep with them. As I remember it, you found that out in junior high school. Frederica, poor Freddie. Is it pills or alcohol this time or both? Please, isn't it enough that I came? You think so? After nine years, my loving daughter, you keep taking those pills and one night you'll go like your mother did. The woman who played Sally Bowles on Jill, Broadway. Jill Hayworth. Jill Hayworth is just a slut. She's they, a slut. She's a slut because they talk about her having a boyfriend or having sex. And then he says, oh, well, something alluding to the fact that she lost her virginity in junior high school. Which How did is, I miss that? Yeah, nuts. S good catch. I didn't Junior know. high school? Was she 12? <laughs> oh, my God. Wow, okay. I'm glad you caught that because yeah. I didn't. I was just like, she does talk about having two or three different husbands. She does. Even though she's maybe in her late 20s. Yeah, 28. Maybe. And then J Jessica Freddy is drunk, clearly. And pills. and pills, the pills, and the drunks, and the drinks, which, I, of course, I related to. And then he also says this classic line, Walter Brennan, as he's as they're all lined up and staring him down, and he's staring back, and they're he's trying to figure out if Julie Harris, as the second wife, can hear him. He says, that woman has ears that can hear sunshine. What did that mean? I wrote that down, too. What does that mean? What does it's, that it, mean? It is memorable. It's also, memorable. the thing about Julie Harris is this. Eleanor Parker, to me, spoiler alert, is suspect from the start, no matter what she's yeah. in, because she seems so artificial, and she's trying just to be this actress and things. Yeah. Julie Harris, being one of the great dames of the stage, she didn't do a lot of movie work as much as stage, I think, but she is known from the classics East of Eden and The Haunting in the early 60s. She also famously played Emily Dickinson in... The Bell of Amherst for years. She was in Knott's Landing. A lot of people from my generation know that. That's kind of before your time. She was um, Mary Todd Lincoln on Broadway. And I think yes. on film and on the set of this movie is where she told my mom to look into a play that is not the play that she did, which I think was called The Last of Mrs. Lincoln. Yes, that sounds right. But it was a different play that centered on Mary Todd Lincoln that my mom should look into it because she, she would be a perfect Mary Todd Lincoln. Wow. So that piece of information stuck with her until the 2000s. <laughs> 10 years. Uh, 10 years ago. Yeah. That's amazing. Because your mom so and she her... spotted that. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Your mom was so good in that. She should have won the Oscar. I was really pulling for her. And she has such a, she does write really eloquently and in depth about her experience of that in, in, in her book, too. She does. With Daniel Day-Lewis and the audition and all that stuff. And God, you just forget that how many Oscars does your mother have? Two? You still have to fucking audition and meet with and prove yeah. yourself and she full on had to do yeah. 
she hired like she got a dress made and hired she did a hair bunch of, and makeup. Yeah, she she did a whole bunch of um I, I think also just because she knew that because of this thing that Julie Harris had told her that oh, it yeah. really stuck in her it was meant to be as a as a young kid yeah. almost. Yeah. Um I think Julie Harris did Glass Menagerie on Broadway was one of her last things. As Amanda Wingfield, yeah. so did your mother. They had kind of like similar certain characters that that fit both of them very well. See, this is why I'm glad you're here because yep. I would not have known how to put that together. Yes, because she did your mom did Glass Menagerie with did she do it with Zach or was that No, Quinto? it was it was That was Cherry Jones. Yeah, it was she did it with um some other gay guy we know. Am I wrong? Yes. Why can't I <laughs> Oh shit. We should know this. And it was just a few it's years the ago. Director... Oh, it's Joe Mantello. Joe Mantello. Yes, Joe, yeah. who directed Boys in the Band yes. and Three Tall Women this year. And I thank God ran into him backstage at Boys in the Band and got to tell them him how great all that shit was. Um, my mom also directed this is actually crazy. What? My it's gonna well, it doesn't quite fit your, your I don't theme, care. Go, go. But she It's directed, a holiday special. We can say whatever we want. She directed Julie Harris in a holiday themed television movie in like 1996 called oh, wow. The Christmas Tree. Oh, wow. So they stayed friends and compadres yeah, and everything. Or friendly. I mean, my mom, I think, always really like, you know, admired her and because he wouldn't. I, exactly. Which brings me back to this. My point of this is like she, Julie Harris is in this and always was so warm and likable. She just feels like an inherently good person because yes. she didn't play villains. No, she didn't. I mean, it would be great if she, again, spoiler alert, but like you kind of from the jump don't think that she's going to be the bad guy Not in this, even though all signs point to her as Walter Redden says she's poisoning. She writes a note that oh, says that's right. they, they come in and it's the Eleanor Parker sister that reveals that she thinks that that Julie Harris is poisoning him. And then they ask why. And he, she says, well, he wrote me this note that says she's poisoning me. <laughs> well, yeah, that'll do it. That's, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Also, it turns out she's been accused of poisoning her first husband. Yes. And it's never made clear, like, why they got married. Walter no. Brennan and Julie Harris, they don't like each other. No. Right? They seem to hate each other. She's a good 30 years younger than him. Yeah. He's <laughs> confined to the bed and yeah. seems like he has been for quite some time. And then there's also a bit of a mystery that's never solved, I don't think, about how the white, the mother... They say a lot about their mother, how she died. Was it suicide? Did someone kill her? Did he kill did, her? Did, did he drive her to suicide by just cheating on her, her or something? Maybe with Julie Harris. Maybe. It just is because people don't necessarily communicate with each other in this movie. They glare at each other through windows and down staircases yes. and peeking through so doors. So it's tough to express yourself. It's really tough to, to, to decipher what's going on. The first, this, and Then Julie goes out to the barn in the first appearance of the Yellow Rain Slicker. Which um, becomes very important. There's an iconic yellow rain an slicker. Iconic. A red Wellington boot. Very similar boot. to the It yellow rain slicker. <laughs> That's right. Yes. The, the, the slicker matters in this movie to the degree that in the DVD reprint that's on uh, IMDb, the only picture on the cover is this yellow rain slicker with the yellow hat and the pitchfork and the red gloves yeah. and the red boots. Like this, it's supposed to look like the, you know, the classic like Jason Michael Myers scream villain silhouette shape thing. They do say about, so she goes out to the barn and they say about her, we didn't come up here to figure out how to kill her, how she killed her first husband. And they asked the father, Walter Bennett, what he wants them to do about it. And he says, kill her! Commercial break. What do you want us to do? Save my life. The question is, how do we save it? She knows you won't let us go to the police, so we can't threaten her with that. Just what exactly do you want us to do? Get rid of her. How? Kill her! Um, and then Julie and Sally have a nice warm moment. I'm just going to say the actress's names because it's too confusing to use all these names. So Julie and Sally have a nice warm moment in the kitchen. They do. And they're very... That's when you know that she's not the kid. The, the minute they yeah. get along, it's very obvious. It's that, very sweet. No. Yeah. And, and I gotta... I mean, I'm being... Listen, I've been in so much TV, a lot of bad movies. I have no room to point the finger... Hopefully my audience in general knows I do all of this with love. I should only be so lucky in 20 or 30 years that people look back some of the things I've been in and can make fun of them. So I only say all this with love. And, and within that, I'd like to say like everyone in this, because you look at this and you're a filmmaker, it probably took three weeks to make. If, if that, that, if yeah. that. Some people probably worked less than that. Like Jill Hayworth, like she's quickly disposed of. Yeah, very quickly. She <laughs> probably got like three or four days on this. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. So then they have a warm moment. Sally goes up to... um. 
to try to like take care of Jessica and has a talk with her. Cause Sally clearly is a lot of the youngest children and families are, which you are too. I am. Um, They're the problem solvers. Exactly. My youngest, there's six of us, my youngest brother, and he's, thank God he's amazing, but he is handling all the business. He can really, how he turned out the sanest, I don't know. Because you just got it. The youngest one, it just falls on you to just, everyone needs to be okay at all times. Yes. That's very much my mom's role in this film. Yeah, completely. And so then we see her with, Je- she's upstairs trying to be out, she's trying to Alan on it out with fucking Jessica Walter. Freddie, why don't we get dressed in something nice and come on downstairs to dinner? It's almost ready. I'm having my dinner. As she swirls around a tumbler of room temperature vodka straight out of the bottle. No no brand, just straight. And like a great youngest sibling, my mom immediately goes, okay. Like, <laughs> yes. not gonna, she doesn't go to I'm not going to confront that. <laughs> no. Not getting into that now. Nope. So then they go down. Everyone's for dinner. They've had their hair done. It's This is when we find out it's Christmas Eve. Yes. Uh, and, what? And everything's elaborately decorated. There's a giant meal spread out. They're all in their, their Christmas evening wear. And your mom is wearing... It was that thing I remember from the early to mid-70s. There was a, a look that women had that, like... It looked like a nightgown, and maybe it was, but it was also like a fancy hostess dress. Yeah, it was unclear. Lace. A lot like, of lace. A lot of lace. Um, the ringlets are all there. Ringlets are back. Well, Everyone, she and Jill Hayworth have a ringlet. It's ringlets. They're both in the ringlets. Category. It's a, ringless, a ringlet competition, yeah. but I think your mother wins. Yes. And Jill says, you'd almost think we were home for the holidays as they look around how glorious and like, Isn't well, this you your home? literally are. Yeah. <laughs> you literally are. What? Oh, but what I was going to say earlier is like everyone, or maybe I didn't make my point, but I want to reiterate how good everyone is in this for as brief and I'm sure undirected as they probably were. I'm sure that John Llewellyn Moxie was just, this is your mark, here's the line, go. Camera set up, camera set up. Stand in that tableau, line up. Someone, you know, Sally's in the back and then Jill and then Jessica look glorious and look in the camera. And they talk about... uh Walter Brennan and Julie Harris said something about the doctor said he was dying of galloping old age. Which I want to die of. I am dying galloping of it. I think I am age. dying of it. Amazing. <laughs> so they, 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 Jill, hey, the Jill Hayworth character starts pressing Julie about what happened back in the day. And apparently she was put in jail in an asylum. Yes. Accused of poisoning Shocking. her husband. So why did he marry this woman? It's unclear. He saw that and was like, hmm. She seems like the gal for me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. This seems May good. have murdered her have... husband, went crazy. Yeah. She does. The only time it's, they're trying to mislead us to think that Julie did it is when she says something about, uh, she goes into a very like brief, but very heartfelt and intense monologue about what it was like in jail and in the asylum. And then she says, and if I ever get accused of killing someone again, I will not be the one who wakes up screaming. Which, wow. Yeah. And then commercial break, I think. There's one other great line from Jill Hayworth who says when they're just, they're because they kind of openly discuss murdering Julie Harris in front of her. <laughs> they do. She's <laughs> just sort of standing right there and yes. they're just like, so where are we going to kill her? And <laughs> she's just there. And then she, uh, Jill Hayworth says, all men are paranoid. That's why some of them do get murdered. What? <laughs> sure. Sure. But, Okay. Sure. All right, sure. Joseph Stefano. Yeah, all right. Uh, we'll just go along with that. Again, it's interesting to watch these movies, too, because most of them are written by men, and a lot in this genre were all starring women. Yeah. So it's it's a, 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 what a these straight men... white man, I'm guessing, his version of how women talk. Yes. They, they want to kill you. They're drunks or whores mm-hmm. or mothers. Or they just are, like, in head-to-toe clothes and... <laughs> Are in yeah. grad school and no one thinks of them as sexual. Exactly, yeah, with tiny little brats by their by their temples. Jessica and Freddie start screaming, screaming, screaming upstairs. Eleanor, go, in her perfect, tremulous, breathy Eleanor Parker voice, she's in the sewing room. Okay, yeah. so they run upstairs. Jessica's just freaking out. So beautiful. Why die? Why dead? Freddie, please let us help you. Drop that glass, Freddie. Murderer! No suicide, no, no suicide. He killed her! Freddy, you're gonna bleed to death. Death! Death! Who will care about me? Mother will love me because mommy loves me. Mother's gone, Freddy. Oh. No. Not gone! Not gone! 
I, I, I feel her. I've seen her. I, I see her. I see her. I see her. I see her. Come on, Freddy. There's a giant portrait of their mother. But it's right? her. But it's her. It's clearly a portrait of Jessica Walter. It's so strange. And then she like, she shatters, a, she's already shattered a glass in her hand. She's great. No shade on Jessica, who we no, obviously she's worship. the best of what she's got. She shattered a glass. She's bleeding. There's blood splattered on the portrait of the mother who looks exactly like Jessica with a perfect teardrop of blood coming out of the eye. It's a very Jesus-y, oh, yeah, Virgin kind Mary of is. Thing. I almost feel like Jessica was probably in another TV movie that year that needed a portrait, and they were just like, just get, the, or maybe they were like this. Anybody here, Sally, Jill, Eleanor, probably not you. Uh, did anyone else have a movie this year where they did a portrait of you? Okay, that's gonna be the mother. J- Jessica does. Okay, good. That's gonna be the mother because it's not even trying to look like no, and certainly doesn't look like a blend of Walter Brennan in there anymore. And she also keeps talking about how beautiful the mother was, which is weird when it. Is her. Oh, that's right. That's That's true. true. Because she clearly still has the most problems. I mean, I guess. Or the most, like, she's acting out the most with her drinking. And then Jill logically is like, bye to this bullshit. I'm going to go. Just good night. On Christmas Eve night, she goes out to... Alex tries to get her to stay. And then I wrote this down. And help me put this in context. Eleanor says to her, it could be months before he... Oh, because she's like... Jill says, I'm going to go. Should I say goodbye to my, our father? And Eleanor says, it could be months before he no- notices yeah, you're what, gone. What did that mean? I can just, relate a little bit because my father, he, and it wasn't just the dementia. It was his narcissism and his self-absorption. We would come and go and visit or not go. And then like, he wouldn't really care if we were gone or not. And he didn't really keep track of where, there were six of us. And he didn't really keep track of who was in town and who was not in town and blah, blah, blah. So maybe I'm just projecting right. my own circumstances on that. That seems like him. It, yeah, yeah. He just wouldn't even. But why are they trying to save this? It really comes down to, why are they trying to save this guy? Exactly. He really also not a good guy. I can also relate to in my family. So Joe runs 18 miles out to the barn garage. She gets pitchforked in the back. She does after her car won't start. After oh, right. All of that. Yeah. And she she's taking the Mercedes, I guess. I guess. It's unclear. The the copy on YouTube is pretty good, but the movie itself is so dark that it's hard to it's, see. A lot of scenes are just like kind of a blurry silhouette. Yeah. Yeah. Through space. And it doesn't matter. It it's doesn't. fine. It's we, fine. We, yeah. Jill gets one pitchfork to the back and dies instantly. One quick pitchfork. <laughs> just a light tap on the back and she's done. <laughs> done she's gone she gets dragged drag her they do they drag her yes the the and this is by the yellow rain slicker the, the red wellington boots and the red rubber gloves they drag her but as we find out later not very far no so raining 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 the next morning it's christmas which i put together later ted drops by he and sally have known each other or dated somewhere? something he definitely oh sold- no he says something very terrible which is why i ended up <laughs> hating ted Nice, sane man like you doing all the way out here on Christmas morning. Had to stop in and look at Mrs. Killian. Oh, how's she doing? She's doing much better. Good. Anyway, being as I was so close, I couldn't help but stop by and take a fresh look at someone who secretly worshipped me when she was all of 16. Well, I guess I wasn't being as secretive as I thought. Your face was never a very good place to hide things. Yes. What? And now that you're old enough, rude. I think, yeah, <laughs> really and she rude. She kind of takes the on chin, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, this again, written by a white straight man, um, uh, or a straight man about how women, you know, should be treated and talked to. And he's a doctor. She finds out, and this is when they had the thing like he's a doctor, and Julie wanted him to see Walter Brennan. Walter Brennan wouldn't see him. My father would do the same thing. I'm, I'm realizing I relate to this movie way yeah. too much. Was your father Walter Brennan? Uh, my father was Walter Brennan. Okay. He was, uh, no, I wish. He wasn't that fun. No, wait. I would pick my dad over Walter Brennan That's any good. day. My dad is, my dad isn't that bad. He just was like, it was a rough ending for my father. And the whole gay thing, you know. At least well, none of these girls are gay. Yeah. They didn't have that with their father the, that we know of. That we, yeah. Well, well the, the sequels. <laughs> the sequel, yeah, exactly. So there's no indication. Nothing happens on Christmas morning. I noticed at the very, very end, all the presents are still unopened. Yeah, they haven't gotten to that. They've got a lot going on. It's a lot going on. Sally uh, goes to wash a dish. She puts on the red rubber yes. gloves. It's a little bit of a misdirect. Also, when Ted leaves, my mom gives him a look that I've given to many a boy as, I, as they leave the bar. She just, like, leans against the side of this, like, entrance to the doorway with just, like, a... <sighs> Oh, 
Did your mom say anything about this movie? It's not in the book at all. She said amazing cast and that it was a piece of shit. <laughs> Thank you, Sally. Uh, well, she's right. Piece, I mean, 11 Oscar nominations among the actors God, in this movie. Let's just time out for that. Okay, your, mother, your mother's how, like she's one, two. She has three nominations okay. total. Walter Brennan has, oh wait, I wrote it down. Walter Brennan has four. What? Total. Uh, what? Eleanor Parker has three. Wow. And Julie Harris has one. Wow. Holy crap. The surprise for me there, the jaw dropper is Walter Brennan having any. But that was back in the day. I, he was in a lot of like, I feel this is just off the top of my head, probably in a lot of John Wayne movies, things like that, playing the cookie. Hey, they, cookie. You know, Yeah, they she, definitely were all supporting actor. Nowadays, uh, completely, sure. yeah. And he was like a beloved supporting character back then when that, okay, fair enough. Things were different. So then... We and feel free to jump in and help me with this plot if you want to. But then Sally goes to the phone. There's this weird, weird noise, which if I've never heard in my life, and I was alive then. Yeah, it's very confusing. It still did. At first, if you if you're watching this movie blindly and know nothing about it, you think, oh. A ghost is doing it, and it's also haunted the phone. Because yeah. it's a weird, eerie demon siren noise, like, wah, wah, yeah. wah, wah, wah. that's Sounds even like a British ambulance from the 70s. <laughs> yes, but it's actually the sound the phone makes in this mysterious, non dis non-disclosed location town of when the lines have been cut. Apparently. The phones are out. It just keeps raining and raining. Walter's peekabooing out the thing out the door. Julie's making very a lot like very um a lot of emphasis on her making this honey and warm milk, and she's got a mug of honey and warm milk, and she's going to take it to you think she's gonna take it to Walter, maybe this is the poison. She takes it up to Jessica. Right. At this point in the movie is where I'm confused as to what they're all doing there. Yeah. Because now they've stopped trying to do anything and they're just right. kind of hanging. They're hanging out. I'm not they, sure what they're waiting for. They're not talking about Christmas. They have an open presence. Jill is gone, but no one cares. Well, no one knows she's dead no except for the killer. Dead. The phones are out because, of course, that was back in the day when, like, you didn't hear from people. For, there were obviously no cell phones or internet. So you didn't live in that world, Sammy G. I did briefly. <laughs> it's a baby. Briefly, but I like remember people, it fondly. You just like people would leave and like fingers crossed. Yeah. And some families had like call me when you get their policies. Ours did not. Yeah. Let's hope you don't get pitchforked in the back on the way out. And then they suddenly like uh, <laughs> just fingers crossed. Then Julie, they're kind of like it slides a little bit more into trying to put the focus on her. And I realize she's dressed very Mrs. Danvers. Her hair is very Judith Anderson and Rebecca, Mrs. Danvers, with the upswept knot in the, the center part. And she starts creeping around the house with a mug in her hand. And then does she, I have written down here, we hear Sally screams and Julie says, Frederica has killed herself. Right. Um, well, we see her, oh, right, we right. see someone, like, so Jessica Walter falls asleep in the tub with a glass in her hand, Vodka. as one does. Sure. And then somebody comes in and just, like, gives her a slight <laughs> nudge. Like, pulls, pulls her feet. Yeah, or pulls her feet, ju and then, just so she just slips under the water, right, yeah. and the glass kind of falls out of her hand, and... Yeah, and then and she... And then that's that. And then they come in later, and, like, well, you hear Sally, Sally gets a lot of screaming in. A lot of screaming, and it actually made me sad that she never really got to do, like, a slasher or horror movie. You know what? I was gonna one. say, I was gonna ask you, I didn't remember her screaming like that in no. anything else. She's got a good scream. Yeah, good scream. She's a good screamer. Yeah, yeah, she and she also, and spoiler alert, she does because you think she's going to get killed, but she doesn't. But your mother also, she was never a mur. She never played a murderer, right? No, I don't think she's ever killed or got killed. That's a creepy thing to talk about to her. No, well, she's son. killed. She's I'm killed. Sorry. She's killed many times. Killed a good time many times. <laughs> But as an actress on screen, sidebar, your mother, speaking of Oscars and not, Soap Dish, your mom in Soap Dish is literally not one of, like, for female best comedic performance, one of the best comedic performances ever on film. She screams in that. She actually, screams. Now that I think about it. Comically, She gives, though. like, a comic, like. But her physical work, her, like, I mean, I would say she doesn't get her due for that. She does get her due from all the gays. The and gays it, have, have as, as they've done with many an important piece of work they've kept that going <laughs> going yes yeah, that, that movie is so good but she like did not get the props from the at the time she deserved in terms of like getting an oscar nomination straights. for that too many straights out there too many straights so jessica's gone 
and they're like, did you poison her, Julie Harris? And she's like, no, I didn't because I drank it myself. Which I'm, I'm not sure what, why she, I kept expecting her to be like, pump my stomach then. <laughs> what's the ev Okay. Yes. That's not really like exonerating you're, evidence for you. Just, like taking what? your word for it. You okay. Could've... We think you killed someone. We're not going to believe you. <laughs> and then that's, we do find out that the roads are cut off. The river has flooded or whatever. It's raining, raining, raining. This The rain they use for this movie in Southern California clearly caused a drought in the rest of the area because it's like raining so much. Also, and this is where I wrote it down, just to go back to as we were talking before, we never find anything out about their lives. We still don't know if anyone has married or has a boyfriend. We think that Sally doesn't because she just like is a young person. Jill has the husbands. We don't know if anyone has jobs, why they can be there, where yeah, they've come from, and where Christmas. they live. Where is – what? Yeah. Like, yeah, they're not contacting any other no, people in the world. But they also don't of. seem like this is a thing. They like, they don't come home for Christmas every year. It's been nine years. So what are you doing? And if, if Sally hasn't come home for nine years, then she was a child. Yeah. That doesn't track. That doesn't track for me. And then also it jumps back and forth to like how do they spend their days because it'll be morning and then it'll be night. Yeah. Days pass by very quickly, but – then short periods of time feel like an eternity. <laughs> exactly. And then that's when Sally decides, like, she, she says to Eleanor Parker's character, Alex, Alex is like, the roads are cut off. We can't do anything. And Sally's like, I walked to the neighbor to Mrs. Killian's house. It's like a mile away. And then we get a really long sequence of your mom in the woods. Being chased. Being chased by, eventually by a slicker person. And my mom hides in a hole. <laughs> It's running she just through. hides in a hole. She's working like crazy. She's running through the woods. The other person, the killer, is running through the woods. She's down there, commercial break. Okay, come back. Now Julie's out in the slicker, no hat. Just S Sally, you don't know what happened to her. She comes back in the rain. She falls down in the garage on top of Jill's body. Yeah. Just a hand sticking up. From and then the I rewound the her other hand is on the face. Yeah. And it's really like it's genuinely creepy and scary, but it's so brief. I don't understand why they didn't hold on the face longer unless it's such a bad reproduction or just a mask. I think it must be because it's not her. It's some terrible mask or like, because yeah, later bust. in the film, my mom goes rolling down a hill <laughs> and it is just a pile of pillows that is going to be thrown down a hill. Like there's no, oh, that, yes. there's no even attempt for that to look like a human body. <laughs> There's no, like, relation to the way a human body would move. <laughs> There's no, it's not how weight moves, uh, yeah, works, how gravity no. works. But we'll get to that. But first, because your mom is working like crazy in this movie. Yeah, now she's really just having to do it all. Uh, she is. She's got her little light blue, like, tight little parka on. Sidebar about the costumes. The all right. Costumes. Eleanor, and I know it was the, the, the fashion of the day, but they put Eleanor and a lot of them in these, like, tight acrylic lady turtlenecks with a chain necklace and then like a like a flat polyester ski slack it's a very like it's a very like switzerland ski chalet yeah vibe. It, it is but it's not a flat and this is like uh, listen i only want to watch women on screen i celebrate women i'm not like bagging on anyone's bodies or looks or anything like that i would watch these movies as a little kid and be like just be fascinated by women but there's some unflattering things you have to be like, they could have done better. They yeah. could have done better for Eleanor with a girdle under that. It also neck. makes her look older, which is yeah. part of the strange casting of her being so much older than the other women who yeah. are her sisters. And I just like the pure vanity of like, I mean, maybe she was, was like, you're going to cast me. Okay. You know, I'm 25 years older than you. Fine. I'll do it. Or if she was like, yes, I could play a girl just about 30 years old still. I'm the same. I think you know. that sounds like more of what was happening. <laughs> I think so too. I My think mom so too. is also wearing, before this, uh, in one of her most ringleted looks, <laughs> in which like, she has just saying a lot. humming from all <laughs> over the place. She's also wearing this red napkin dress. <laughs> that's like, but it's also kind of like a rotting Miss, Miss Havisham style it's red and there's just lace and like all the way up to the neck. Yeah, it's constricting. It's very Victorian. Weird. Yeah, Victorian it's weird. vibe. Yeah. Yeah, we don't really see. I mean, Julie Harris, her look is pretty. I think she's got a few acrylic turtlenecks too. Um, there was clearly a sale that day at the studio store. So then um, she, oh, your mom, we're back to screaming. She screams some more. She screams on top of her dead sister's body through muddy, muddy fingers. 
No, they don't get that mud off her face the rest no, of the movie. That's on there now. Okay, that's on there yeah, permanently. That's there. Per- I mean, it moves around because, of, you know, who cares they about continuity? No one bothers to wipe her face off. She runs into the house. Now, things really start to pick up finally when you can see them because it is so dark outside yes. in the garage. It's also obscured by the whatever they're doing to make it look like it's raining. <laughs> so it makes the screen yeah. look like it's totally blurry. Yeah, and there's a couple of times where... It's that thing used to bother me so much as a kid, not knowing all that was involved. But it's like the daytime. Yes, yeah. the bright sunshine, but it's pouring down rain. Yeah, yeah. they do that several times. Or the bright sunshine, but they've just darkened the screen to make yeah, it look yeah, like Yeah, night. exactly, yeah. yeah. With that day for night thing that doesn't always work and especially doesn't look good years later. So then the action picks up. She runs from Julie into the house. Julie's following her. Sally looks for Julie in the house. She's screaming for Eleanor Parker. She thinks Julie's the killer now at this point. Understandably, she locks all the doors. She hides in an armoire. Sure. She crawls up in this like closet armoire thing. Julie's like, I live here. I'll go through the cellar door. I know how doors work. She comes up through the house and Julie keeps saying, Christine, uh, which is Sally's character's name. You're safe now, darling. You're safe now, darling. In a creepy way, which is a misdirect to the audience, but also like, I don't... I, yeah, I don't blame her for hiding in that. Me neither. But it, <laughs> it's also crazy that I feel like, I mean, I, I get why no one wants to wade through <laughs> most of this movie. But it is crazy that there is a portion of anything on screen that depicts my mom being chased by Julie Harris. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah like yeah. my mom and Julie Harris in like a Halloween style. <laughs> yes. Like chase through a house. It's pretty great. Yeah. Also, it finally gives your mother a chance to peek through a door. Yeah. She hasn't um, been able to do that at all. This movie she hasn't. Which is really a shame. I think in a, if it's contractually, everyone's like, we do, I get to peek through a door, right? Yeah. Okay. Unless there's a portrait of me. Because if I don't get the portrait of myself and my mother, I get to peek through a door or a window. So Sally goes in the father's room. The voice, Alex says, he's dead. Um, Julie appears. Sally again screams and screams. She is really a good screamer. Sally runs out. She escapes the house. Commercial. Sally's running down the road. She sees the car and it's Alex, right? Right. It's Eleanor Parker. Uh, And Sally's like, oh, my God, Alex, take me into town or whatever. And and it was Julie Harris and she was going to try to kill me. And I hid in an MR. I peeked through a window. And that's when we see Eleanor's face, the cuckoo face, go like... I know. I know, Chris. I knew you'd come to me. You all always came to me. Alex, she would have killed me if I hadn't gotten away. She wouldn't have killed you, Chris. She didn't kill Joe. She didn't kill Freddy. She didn't kill Father. Alex... I want to be free of you all. It's a weird moment for her to drop the axe. I'm not really (laughs) sure why in that moment she just kind of gave up the ghost and was like, well... I did it. I, I it fooled is. him for long enough. And you're in like, so then that's when she gets out of the car and she knocks your mother down a hill. Yeah. Pushes her down a hill. She just straight up pushes her yeah. down a hill. And that's when it's like not super convincing. No. If you don't know better, like she takes it hard. Whatever yeah, she, is falling a Sally takes it hard yeah. down that hill. Yeah. Like, that's a tumble. That's a t- Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't survive that. No, I don't think you would survive that. I actually like usually in these kinds of films when someone thinks that someone might be dead and you think like, well, maybe they should like quickly check to make sure if they're actually dead. This one, I was like, no, she's dead. Like, she, there's, there's no way. Yeah, exactly. Or at least in a coma. Yeah. Something bad happened. Oh, oh and then I, I wrote this down, rewinding a little bit. Eleanor Parker says to Christine, who is your mother? Your, your helpless little faces would have followed me wherever I went. And sooner or later, I'd have come running back because somebody needed me. Even father, after all these years, even father. Alex, Alex, please, please, Alex. Now none of you will ever need me again. And she says, I can be free, free of you all, which I've certainly had that feeling yeah. with my thousands of brothers and sisters and family. Except that she invited them there. <laughs> but to kill them. Yeah. But, but and to they try, didn't want to come. They <laughs> did want to come. She went and picked them up at the airport. It's been nine yeah. years. Seems 
but she wants to blame Julie Harris. Is she? That's how she wants to get yeah. out of it. And she's and then and Eleanor continues and says, "You'll need, you'll never need me again." And she's got that voice, and she just has a little bit of the crazy in it. And when she starts talking that way, all I can hear is the Baroness from Sound of Music, a movie. It was the second movie I think that I saw in the theater as a child. And just and it's I've seen it eight million times and just her going a lovely little thing called boarding school because when, that's what yes. she's gonna say or maybe she says a lovely little thing called boarding school with her liquid you which she probably does indeed have. Ted, Dr. Ted shows up in his truck. Alex, what's happened? She tells Eleanor Parker then she says she tries to like spin it. Then she switches tack and decides mm-hmm. to tell him that that she. They need to go arrest Julie Harris because Julie Harris has murdered all these people. And that Christine, Sally is down the hill somewhere. She fell. She's dead or something. She's dead. I don't know if she tells her that or they find her. They just find her later. I think that she does say she ran off or she fell. Oh. And they're like, oh, we'll have to go get a, the sheriff team and we'll do a search right, for her. Right. At the ending, it just to try to sum it up, what happens is you think that like I always saw it because it's happened so many times lately and get out kept going through my mind because yeah. it's like at the end of get out he's trying to leave and, and there's so many people in so many ways trying to stop him you know you, yeah. you know yeah, what I'm saying so it's like uh Amanda Pete Amanda Pete what? oh she is a well, that was she's basically the younger Amanda Pete she is. in that a way was interesting Allison that was Williams. an interesting slip <laughs> suddenly I see them as one yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. so Allison Williams. Allison Williams, thank you, shoots him. Betty Gabriel comes out. They all, anyway, so it's a little bit like that. So I thought that that there would be more trouble, I guess, even though this movie was 87,000 years before. But like, Eleanor doesn't kill Ted that moment or Christine. She does come back with the sheriff just trusting that Christine's dead. dead. So they bring her back in the house. They're going to go, I guess. I'm not sure what they're going to do because... (laughs) <laughs> because sense. Julie Harris is just standing there. Yeah. And again, there's a long thing where stare they walk up. in the door and they just stare, stare at, her. at each other. Stare, and stare, then stare. Eleanor Parker just walks up the stairs and then tries and to walk past her. It's very weird what yeah. the plan oh. is now. Oh, because they, I remember this now. Eleanor Parker does a real subtle, like she looks up at Julie Harris and no one else can see. And she does the tiniest. I tried to take a picture of it off the TV, but when I watch YouTube on my big TV, the pause covers up everything. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. The pause, the pause screen covers it's everything. So and you good. can't just like take a picture. And it's so brief, I couldn't even snap it. And I'm elderly. But she gives this tiny little like classic Hollywood sneer. I'm trying to do it with my voice. Yeah. That was pretty close. That's okay. kind of what it is. It is. Yeah. It's like, Nye. but with her eyes to so Julie Harris, like I got away with it, bitch, and you're going to be arrested. And then Ted comes out and is like, we found Christine. And... She's in the bed. Now, every other time someone's dead in this, they cover them with a blanket. Like, oh, remember earlier yeah. when they cover up Jessica Walter with this very g- gorgeous, silky comforter thing? Yeah. They love to, I don't know why they did that or what, they love to cover up dead bodies in a bed. They they do, yeah. yes, exactly. And just leave them there just until, like, there. fingers crossed, down the line, someone comes along and gets it. So we, I assumed right away that Eleanor would think that Christine was alive, but Me she too. looks in, but she's, we get later, which does is kind of a clunky kind of a clunky device how they do it like she looks at her and she assumes she's dead right still got mud in her face but we know she's alive because no one's covered her with a silken comfort and also just what she looks alive she just looks alive yeah. she's on her side she she looks alive she looks Sleep. like she's sleeping she's but eleanor's out of her goddamn mind so she looks at her just like <laughs> and then she starts to act and she's like oh christine and then your mother it's like the moment at the end of care it's supposed to be like you know, the surprise thing. And your mother slowly opens her eyes and Eleanor's like, oh shit, I'm fucked. And she really, that's when she really goes for it. She because she loses her <laughs> shit. She could have saved it. Some, I mean, there was a chance it wasn't all lost uh, yes. yet, and she really just. But she's out of her mind at it. the end of her rope. Yeah, she loses it, and she just keeps screaming through the rest of the movie and Trying into to min- pull her hair out. I mean, she's really just <laughs> into. And she, they pull her out of a door. I guess they that confirms that she did it all to the sheriffs. Yeah, and then there's maniacal laughter, and I rewound it. I'm like, I don't know that that's even Eleanor Parker's maniacal laughter. I think they dubbed in more additional maniacal laughter. 
Just to make it clear. Just to really push it home. I assume that my mom, when she came to, told them that she pushed. She just should never have confessed like that. That's really what did her in. Like, yeah. What? Just kill her. Don't, like, right. confess. Yeah, exactly. She could have strangled her. There's a million, a million ways out ways of to it. Solve that. Uh, could, I could have done a better job. <laughs> there you go. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was Home for the Holidays. I, I recommend it as a funny goof to watch with your friends drinking some rum and eggnogs. I mean, why not? Yes, I do too. It's. <laughs> If not for the beauty of the inside of that house, then for... The beauty of the actresses. And their ringlets. The ringlets, the costumes. It's, thank God, still with us are Sally Field and Jessica Walter, still working like crazy, still killing it. And rest, God rest in peace. Jill Hayworth died. I looked her up. She died... Recently. Uh, yeah, not too long ago. She yeah. was 65. And then, you know, up in heaven, Julie Harris and Eleanor Parker. I don't know about Dr. Ted. I'm not sure. I don't sure. know about Dr. Ted either, who Walter ends Brennan. up with my mom at the end of the film. <laughs> that, oh, the that's love, right. They do. The really beautiful love story that is oh, Ted and the Christine. Cre- the creepy Celine Dion love story. I loved you as a child, and yeah. now I'll have you as a woman because yes. that's uh, that's normal. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, what what else do we have to talk about? That's it. Are, are you... <laughs> Are you by any chance going to be home for the holidays with Sally Field? I will probably be home for the holidays with her. And now I'm a little frightened <laughs> to be home she, for the holidays. I'm not sure what this well, honey, has Well, honey, she's made. the good person in it. The other family members yeah, are the crazy that's ones. That's true. So that's true. Fingers point to uh, that's you. That's true. I probably will be donning a very memorable yellow trench coat and red Wellington boots. And, and some ringlets. Murdering some members. And, oh, I'm always wearing my ringlets. <laughs> Sam, tell us where folks can find you on the social meds. Um, You can find me on Twitter, Sam Grice, and on Instagram, SamG1287, um, where I make a fool of myself daily. Oh, you're adorable. I'm at the Sam Pancake on Instagram, J Sam Pancake on Twitter, because I'm on Tech Sam Pancake. Sam, thank you so much for doing this. Thanks for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. This has been Sam Pancake. And while I want everyone to have a very happy holidays, whether you're home for it or not, I just want to remind you a little something about me. The next time I ever get accused of killing someone, it will not be I who wakes up screaming. (laughs) You can subscribe to Sam Pancake Presents the Monday Afternoon Movie on iTunes, Spotify, or anywhere else you'd normally find a podcast. Follow the Monday Afternoon Movie page on Facebook to get the latest updates about the show. This is a Table Cakes podcast. Table Cakes is a woman-owned, L.A.-based podcast network. To find out about our other shows, go to tablecakes.com. To support Sam Pancake Presents, the Monday Afternoon Movie, and other Table Cakes shows, go to patreon.com slash tablecakes.